So consent has been in the news a lot this week, and I know it's sort of a tricky conversation, but I thought that it would be a good opportunity for Amir and I to just brush up on what is consent, what does it look like, how do you know if you have consent, how can you take away consent? This doesn't need to be a scary conversation, but it is an important one, and I think we can always brush up on rules about consent because like I said, it is incredibly important. So first of all, Amir, how would you define consent? And then I wanna give oh you what Rain, how they would define consent. It, consent is when you give whatever whoever your sexual partner is, like verbal, without verbal confirmation that you are agreeing to partaking in any acts and you're not in under the any influence. any acts? Not in any acts, in whatever act that like you're specifying. In the moment. In the moment. In yeah. the moment that you are agreeable to what is happening. Yeah, and like you're not, moment. you're not incapacitated. Obviously, you're not yeah. inebriated to a point where you couldn't make that choice if you were sober. Yes, that yeah. is a very good answer, Amir. Basically, consent is an agreement between participants to engage in sexual activity. And like Amir pointed out, I think it's very clear when you see consent. Like you well, have no Yes, consent doesn't have to be verbal, but verbally agreeing to different sexual activities can help both you and your partner respect each other's boundaries. Um, so yeah, it doesn't need to be the can I kiss you? Yes, yeah. you may kiss me. Um, you can read each other's body language, but if you ever have a question like oh, I, I'm not really sure, maybe they're giving me some mixed signals, you can always just ask, is this okay? Are you comfortable with this? A thing you pointed out, Amir, at least you alluded to that I think is important is just because you're making out with someone does not mean that, that, that they wanna have sex with you or do anything more than making out. Because making mm -hmm. out is really fun, maybe you just wanna make out at the club or at the bar or at the movie theater or at the picnic, I don't know, it's your yeah. life. Um, how does consent work? In real life, Amir, how would you like how in in real time uh, hooking up and sexual activity? How would you define consent? Okay, working? let me paint a picture. Um, you're making out with someone, and then it gets a little bit heavier, yeah. and then you start moving your hand down, and then ooh, a little slap. Yeah, or like move the hand back. Yeah. She's not giving consent. Actually, yeah, that's actually- He's not giving consent. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty clear message. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty clear message. So uh, what Rain says is when you're engaging in sexual activity, consent is about communication and should happen every time. Giving consent for one activity one time does not mean giving consent for increased or re recurring sexual contact. For example, agreeing to kiss someone doesn't give that permission, that person permission to remove your clothes. Um, and also you can change your mind at any time. You can withdraw consent at any point if you right. feel uncomfortable. And the way that someone withdraws consent isn't necessarily going to be a firm, no, I take away my consent. But it is just stop. as valid yeah, if stop. they say that, yeah. then if they say stop, then if they move a hand, that's all the same, that's all the same thing. And you should feel comfortable that if at any point in time you want to stop what's happening, you have every right just because you gave consent initially to change your Mind. I think you need to, a big part of consent is you need to prioritize mm -hmm. the other person's experience before your primal instincts. Okay. Yeah, you know I, would, I, mean? I, I, I would agree with that. I think. Like, cuz not, it's not gonna be fun for either of you unless it's fun for both of you. I, obviously. I think, you know, it's sort of, I'm thinking of the expression, you know, it takes two to tango. Yeah. And I think that if you use the analogy of dancing, um, you, it's a partnership. You need to make sure that both of you are dancing, that both of you have the rhythm, that you like yeah. what's happening, and that you understand the moves that are happening. Otherwise, it looks like how I look when I dance, and that's bad. I'm a bad dancer. I've seen it. it's terrible. Yeah, it's really, it's really not good. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about what consent does not look like, because this is uh, why some stuff has been in the news recently. Um, and you should know that there are instances where even if someone is saying yes, they are not legally allowed to give consent. Uh, someone being incapacitated because of drugs or alcohol cannot legally give consent, so that is something to be mindful of. Someone being under the legal age of consent as defined by that state can also not give uh, consent. Um, what consent also doesn't look like is assuming that wearing certain clothes, flirting or kissing is an invitation for anything more. Uh, pressuring someone into sexual activity by using fear or intimidation or assuming you have permission to engage in a sexual act because you've done it in the past, all of that not okay, um, and if someone says no, you have to acknowledge that no. Um, I think that's sort of baseline stuff. I, I don't want, again, I don't want this to be scary. I want to have an accessible conversation about consent because I think it's really important. But Amir, my question for you is, why are we so uncomfortable about talking about consent? I, I'm already nervous I don't know. about it's this comment section because I'm afraid that a bunch of people are gonna be like, you know, what's that thing that you see, like regret, 
isn't rape or something. You know, you hear yeah. shitty comments like that. We should be able to have an open, respectful discourse about consent. I don't know. It, it is. It's peculiar to me why it's such an uncomfortable conversation. My my first the first place I go to maybe is because it's uncomfortable to even get into that situation for a lot of people in the first place. To get to the point where to like- To be sexually oh, intimate? Yeah, to be okay. sexually intimate. So all of a sudden, like there's all these, it, what it seems like, I'm just assuming here for a lot of these people is like all this red tape around it. Okay, so you think that people view consent sometimes as rules. Yeah. Like, Already, it's so hard enough to be intimate with someone, to be open with someone in a sexual way, and now you have to do all these things that may yeah. take you out of the moment, that may may be like weird. And I also think that it's sort of a recent conversation. Um, I, I'm again, I don't know because I was little and I wasn't being, I wasn't talking about consent when I was younger. But I, I think that um, talking about consent and why it is so important and why you need to have it from both parties before you engage in a sexual act is sort of a recent phenomena. Yeah. And for a while, it was, you know, it was. I think with the help of social media and the internet and connection, you realize that uh, sexual assaults happen and yeah. that people um, engage in behaviors that they that they didn't want to. And um, that and look, look, let me let me add one more thing. And I want to try to be delicate about this mm -hmm. for guys at least. Consent can seem it can seem. I'm not saying it is to be one sided. Okay. Toward it, like against against guys. And like let me for example, this whole bachelorette. Bachelor in Paradise situation. Yeah. So it all came out, and you first hear from the 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 girls camp that she did not consent to any of this, mm -hmm. and immediately like you can see like a lot of the guys like they they feel like it was an attack on the guy that like he was just as drunk as well. So why isn't he bringing up this argument that he wasn't able to consent? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that situation is I think a little different because he says he. As far as we know from their camps right mm -hmm. now, and they're just speaking through sources, he says that he can remember everything. She was in a state of blackout. I also think there is sort of a, a power difference that we have to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I think that both. It, it, she also doesn't necessarily blame him. I don't know that situation. I, I'm hesitant to really speak on it because we're still waiting for confirmation and details. But do, do you yeah. kind of get what I'm saying? Like. Because it's usually the the guy that has to make the initial moves. I don't know. It's it's. I don't I'm, know about I'm, that. I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get to yeah. the bottom of why guys feel uncomfortable. And Talking like, about I, consent. Yeah, and I don't. I don't really like believe in any of. I don't say it's right or anything. But I want to. Well, I hear I hear what you're saying. I think that's a very I think what you're talking about is a very is a very real thing. I think that when we do talk about consent, I can already feel as though a lot of guys feel alienated from the conversation, and that's why I want to talk about this with you. Is because I think that um, we all we all need to lean in and engage in the conversation together. You know, I think that we shouldn't be just saying it is only it is a guy problem. Guys need to worry about consent. Girls don't. Mm -hmm. I think that we need for both sides of things mm -hmm. here to join together and realize that they're that we have got to be more careful and delicate with each other. And not be just not make sex and the talking about it such an uncomfortable thing. Right. Um, I, be, I I was just gonna say we, it, it's all about uh, re respect and uh, caring for your partner, and I think that's something that both sides. I think that's a really good first step is to actually care. If like everyone cared about. Getting into a sexual encounter, like caring about the other person. Well, and not antagonizing yeah, the not the, just the other like, yeah. side. I and I think that that's sort of what happens is that we the the conversations become um, very isolationist, and it needs to be inclusatory. Where it's like, look, women have experienced this a lot. Uh, you know, I you you are at I even when I dress kind of girly, I remember being at frat parties and guys. It's shocking to think of now, but would just like come up and like put their hands on me to like dance on, and I'm like, whoa, 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 that's not. That's like My stop, God. and you'd say no, but they're drunk, and you don't know. I don't know. It's like it, girls are familiar with a with a blurry yeah. line, right? Yeah. And I think that guys are as well, but there is a power dynamic there that we have to acknowledge. Right. Um, uh, but I think that the first step is making sure that we can talk about it in a respectful and open way. So we want to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Let's talk about consent because 
it's an okay thing to talk about. We shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. We're gonna disagree, but let's disagree respectfully and let's just make things better for everyone. I also wanna plug really quickly the National Sexual Assault Hotline um, and uh, that is 800-656-HOPE, that's 4673. Or you can chat online with them at online.rain.org. Um, if you've experienced sexual assault, you're not alone. We support you and um, there are people who are trained to help you. So we would encourage you to reach out for help. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching Pop Trigger. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we will see you next time.